guys welcome back to another mcreator tutorial today we're going to be looking at the file manager plugin and i have set up a small workspace to demonstrate how to basically save and read the um config files so um over here uh, i have a window open with the config uh, folder so we go into our run folder and then it has where our directory for our version of the game is it'll be the same kind of folder that you find where your saves and stuff are in your actual game but there's also one called config and then we've basically just stored the file in here now we don't have the file set up because i've basically cleaned it out but what we'll do is we'll just fish some items out and then we should be able to get a config file and stuff uh, set up here's one coming right now so we should have a folder now and as you can see we do have a folder it's called namespace that's what i gave it just to kind of show you that that's where your namespace for your mods would go um you would use obviously your namespace and then we have one called phishing and then we have the dev so if i um look at my nickname uh, this is basically what I've applied for my nickname for the dev. Now you can do that a number of ways when the player starts the world, you can assign it to them. But uh, what I've basically done is I've assigned the dev uh, file for that particular name. So it stores individual scoreboards for that player. So if we open it up with notepad, we can see that the total fish that we have fished is one. So this is a number value. It's not string or it would have uh, commas on the other side of it. And it's in the main folder. I can You can actually make subfolders and stuff like that. Um, right now, we're just going to be focusing on the basics. So uh, we have set up just a regular, full, uh, regular object for the um, for keeping track of our fish. So let's uh, just put that off to the side and we'll fish out another one and we can see what happens next or any particular fish. It doesn't matter if it's um, a junk item either. Got another one. Now this file should have just updated. So I'm going to close out of it. And then I'm gonna open up that uh, folder one again. So I'm just gonna open notepad and as you can see we have uh, two fish now so another thing that we can do is we can read those config files so I have a command I think it's a uh, read and then fishing dev as you can see uh, we can basically print out how many fish that we have my uh, fished out so it says player dev has fished uh, two 0.0 uh, items so that basically indicates that we've read from that file we've gotten 2.0 for the value and then we've basically put that in a string that we could basically read so uh, you can do that for any particular player uh, if we had a separate player on here uh, let's do slash nick name and then we'll go and we'll just call me bob so now it's confirmed that we're bob so let's fish something out so here's a fish coming up. All right, so we got another one. We should have a new file in here. Uh, if I can find it again. Hold on one second. Uh, we'll go to, where is it? Programs, workspaces, examples, and configs. And then we have run, config, namespace, phishing, and we have Bob now in here now. So if I open up this one, you can see Bob has only fished one particular fish. So that's great. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go and we're going to test to see how much Dev has fished. So again, you can see that Dev has fished two fish. How much has Bob fished? Bob has fished one fish. <laughs> I'm just like so repetitive. Okay, so um, as you can see, it works. We can read it, we can set it. And uh, the only thing that is to keep in mind is it has to, to write to the file. It needs to be on something interacting with the player. Uh, to read it visually, um, I 
think you can get away with reading it offline, like not needing for um, an entity to actually trigger something. But um, for basically writing, you need it to be on the player side. So uh, things like phishing can actually write to a file um, using bone meal, any particular global procedure, you could have a right click action do something that you can do something with a right click action or entity walks on a block, stuff like that. You can basically assign um, as long as it's a player doing it. Now, if it's not a player, then you're going to run into some, some issues with the um, actual config. So I just wanted to clear that up because it's an important to actually write it properly or it's not going to actually, um, it's going to give you a bunch of errors. So, uh, because we're fishing, this has to do with us actually physically being at, in the world and fishing for it. So it should work fine. All right, so let's go into mCreator and I have a few files. Um, I have a command or two for the things. Most of these are really repetitive. We'll start with the nickname and stuff like that. So the um, first thing that I've basically done is I've applied the nickname and I've set this to a blank value so it doesn't have any particular uh, when the player first joins they don't have a nickname and then what I'm doing is I'm going to say uh, first nickname and I'm going to apply that as true so what that will do is when we go to new player what I'm doing is I'm going to get if the val mbt or pardon me the uh, player persistent uh, variable uh, is uh, first nickname equals true and if that's true, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the uh, player persistent uh, string to their display name. And then what I'm going to do is basically set the um, global first name or gl persistent global first name for the entity to false. So it doesn't keep updating this particular uh, name. Uh, then how to basically create this is what you would do is you grab an if statement like that from flow control and then you need an operator from logic and you could actually go ahead and just place down the variable like so you could do that that will do the exact same thing as that and then what you can do is you can basically write that variable so what you want to do is go to variable grab your string variable again and then you want to go to entity and you want to scroll down where it says get display name of entity you're going to put that right in there and then you want to go back to your logic uh, or your variables custom variables and you're going to basically place down your uh, value there but you need to go to logic again grab a um, operator for the uh, true or false and then you're going to basically set that to false so basically what this does is is this value true uh, if true then what we're doing is we're basically going to set the display name of the entity and then we're going to set this to false so again that's basically the exact same thing as this it's just we're not specifying if it needs to be true because this will actually always be true if we wanted it to be false then we could do something like not uh, not true and then it would basically do the exact same um, thing as if we were to do equals false um, yeah so that's basically that uh, we can actually delete that and we'll just use this one and then what we'll do is we will take a look at the nickname so the nickname basically allows us to change that particular um, nickname value so what I'm doing is I'm creating a local value uh, called name and then I'm applying the command string for that uh, particular thing so this is the command parameter so when we type the um, nickname for a command and then what we're doing is we're going to get the first parameter of the um, act word after it so basically what I've done is I've basically said okay uh, nick slash nickname and then it's the the name that we want to assign so this is basically our parameter zero which means the word after nickname or our command so then what we're doing is we're just basically setting the um, global nickname to the local nick local 
uh, name file. And then what we're doing is we're just printing out the global nickname to the, um, oh, the little uh, action bar. So again, that's for the command nickname. Uh, this is that file right here. And then what we have is we have the read. So I'll cover the read in just a second. Uh, let's take a look at the write file. So this one basically is how to write to the file. Uh, there's a little bit going on here. So I will cover that in just a second. So again, we're using the player nickname. Now this is optional. You can use it however you want. Uh, I'm creating separate files for each individual player. So I wanted to basically assign a nickname for the player then I can basically name the file as. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because we're basically using the local, the, the global nickname for the entity um, for that particular player. And we're assigning it to a local variable and then we're going to use it into the file name here. So to create one of these, uh, what's going on is we're basically setting a, a file, um, file variable. We're then getting the, or assigning the local, local file to um, the type of file that we want to assign. So in our case, it's .json and we've basically assigned the file name. And then we're basically specifying where we need to save the file. So uh, by default, um, it's just gonna have a string in here. If we go to file manager, you can see it's this block right here. And it is the name dot extension. Extension is basically dot JSON and your name for your file. So you can break that up into create text. If you go to text and then there's create text with and then you can basically create um, whatever you want. You can go .json, uh, .json, and then you can basically go ahead and give it a name if you wanted to. Now you can assign a variable as well, like I did, but um, that would be really the only reason to split it up if you wanted to, but you could go something like name, and that would be name.json. So you can also do it on the same line, so name, dot json and have it like that that would work too uh, the only reason again if you wanted to split it up is if you wanted unique file names for the individual things so uh, the other thing is the location now location is basically just one string but uh, it needs some stuff set up in order for it to work so the first thing that you're going to need to do is you are going to need to use a create text with because you need to actually specify where it needs to run from so put that string back over here for now. And then what we want to do is go back to file manager, get the block that says get the game directory. And you're going to place that right before the um, actual text field that you basically added. Now, if you wanted it to go into the config folder that we've already basically assigned, uh, then what you would want to do is go slash config slash, and then that will go into that particular config. Now for the namespace, now to keep it all nice and pretty and make sure that it's mod, uh, cross mod supported, what you want to do is put your namespace after that for a folder that you want to basically assign your uh, settings and config files in. So in our case, it is just name namespace. And then we want a slash after that as well. Um, now you can have subfolders if you want to, uh, like I did with the fishing one. I basically uh, have all those different players in the different configs. I wanted to keep it separate, so there's only um, fishing for one particular thing, and it doesn't overwrite all the other things. So what I did was I go, I, I created a subfolder in the namespace called fishing. And then I have a slash, uh, for, like a regular uh, back, like slash in front of or after that. So basically, what this is saying is create a file located at the game directory, so where the files are all stored for the world saves, um, settings, stuff like that. And then it's going to go and target the um, config file uh, or a config folder in that particular location. If there isn't one, then it's gonna create it. 
And then what it's going to do is it's going to, to look for a folder called namespace. And if there isn't one, then it's going to create it. And if it's um, located in the, if it's then going to look for a, another folder inside of that folder called phishing. And if it's, again, if it can't find it, then it'll create it. So this will basically allow you to store the location for that particular um, for running the script. So what you now need to do is you need to go to custom variables, grab your local file for the file there. Now again, you're gonna need a file local variable and a object uh, file as well. So you can create those by creating a file and creating a logic. You can name them anything you want. Just make sure that um, you have both of these set up before you start adding blocks. So once you have that, uh, what you need to do is you need to actually test if the file exists or not. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to file manager and then we're gonna does file exist? And then it's going to basically take this uh, file variable that we've set local and it's going to apply it to this particular block here. So what we can do is we can test if the file exists and we can just drop that on, or pardon me, we need to test if it doesn't exist. So what we need to do is we need to go to logic and test if not, file, does file exist? And if it doesn't exist, then we wanna run something in here. First thing that we want to do is we want to create the file. So we're gonna to go to file manager, create the file. And then we want to basically apply any particular um, values that we want in that particular file. Now, if you have multiple properties, you're gonna have to update them um, for the, the values that they are. So that's a little bit more complicated. I'll cover that in the readme file because um, it's basically the same thing as readme, reading the file and stuff like that. So because we're just creating the value right off the bat, what we want to do is we want to um, assign the value for when we fish out that item. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go and add a JSON property. So this one right here is add JSON property and then we, we're gonna give that a name. So this is the name in the config file, uh, this value right here. So in our case, I called it total fish and that's basically what this value is right here. So then what we're doing is we're going, we can assign a um, number, a string, or a logic like true or false statement to this per particular slot right here. In our case, what I've done is I've just basically added a number and this will assign the number to that particular value. So in our case, to get the number block, what you can do is you can go under the math and then grab a number block right here. So the other thing is, uh, what you need to do is you need to write that to the file. So what this does is if you scroll down here and then there is one that says, um, write the JSON object to the inside the local file. So you wanna grab that block right here and then that's going to set that all up. Now, if you've already have uh, a file, then you want to actually create an else statement what this will do is it will basically say, if uh, the file doesn't exist, then do this. If the file does exist, then do this. So what we're going to do is we're not gonna create the file again because we already have the file, so we don't need to do that. But we do need to read from the, uh, the file that we have up. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go to file manager, and then there is one called read JSON file and then it's gonna have our object and our file name. So then we're gonna get the values that we want to basically assign. Now, if you have multiple values for all the um, multiple properties and stuff in your file, then you're gonna to have to update all those for certain things. I'll show you how to basically update them. But in our case, what we wanna do is we want to add our JSON property again. So we can just add that one. And then what we want to do is basically increase that particular value. So what we, need, what we need to do is grab a regular math operator, and then we're going to increase that by one. So take our one value that we've set up here, and then we're going to uh, add that by one. 
Now to get the value from the actual document, you need to go back to file manager and there's these um, three blocks right down here. Uh, what this does is you can get the um, logic, or oh, pardon me, these uh, four blocks. I'm not sure what this one actually does. Um, I think it might have to do with the, pro the, the JSON file object name maybe. Um, but uh, the ones that you're most interested in is the logic, number, and your string. Now we have a number, so what we're going to want to do is grab this one right here. And we're just going to call it the same name as the property that we have over here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically increase that by one. So what it's doing is it's going to assign the property value to this total thing. We're going to get the property value that it's already has, and then we're going to increase that by one. So if you have another one that's um, that you don't want to update in that particular file, then what you would do is we'll just call this one fish because why not? We're doing a fish theme today. So uh, what you would want to do is you would just want to say fish is um, a string. So if we have a string called um, fish or whatever we have in that particular thing, we're just going to apply the same value to fish and then it will make sure that it doesn't remove the value from the document. So basically um, any value that you want to keep the same, just add directly the, the read part right on there, but make sure that these read files are in a read document like so. After uh, what we've done is we basically wrote the file to the um, thing. So again, what I've done is I've just basically placed that at the end here, and this will basically write the, to the, the file uh, what we've basically assi assigned in the read part. So that's all there is to that. Uh, we're basically reading it, we're applying the new values and such. So very fun stuff. All right, so that's that file. Again, uh, not too complicated. We've just created a our variable here to separate the player names and stuff. So that's all that we need to cover in that one. Uh, the read file uh, for the read command is very similar. What we're doing is we're testing for the command parameter um, parameter equals zero. We're testing if it's phishing, and then we're testing if the command par parameter uh, is not for command parameter one is not all. Uh, the reason for that is we'll create another tutorial later on and um, we'll add some extra values to this particular workspace. But if it's not all, then what we're going to do is we're going to get the command parameter one, save it to a local file or local variable. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically get the um, set the path of the file that we want to update. And then we're going to test if it does exist. And then we're going to basically um, read the file. So what we need to do is we need to read the local file and then we're going to basically get the main object and then we're going to basically go ahead and find the value player and then our parameter for our word that we've just basically created so if it's bob then parameter one will be bob has fished and then we're basically reading the value from the document which is this block right here and we have items at the end and then it basically just prints it out to the, a message to the player. So again, very simple system to read and write. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Now, if there is some problems with uh, com like um, compiling and stuff like that, uh, sometimes that happens. Um, most often it has to do with the way that it's set up in the actual workspace. Now make sure like reading the file you don't necessarily have to pretty sure you don't have to like have it uh, run on the player side but um, for things like uh, writing uh, because player fishes item it basically has player in the name uh, we can basically run right to the file with this particular procedure but things like block update ticks um, uh, what do you call it, one block added, things like that, that won't necessarily work all the time. 
actually block update ticks won't work at all because it will actually crash because it is it's not supported by the player side so uh, make sure that you have your writing to the file on your player side and there's obviously ways you can go about doing that but um that's basically all that i have time for today if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out